no regrets in me. And, and so I want to speak very plainly to this family that you are to love one another. You're to support one another. You're to, to minister grace uh, to one another with your words so that there is no regrets. And I believe that that is part of bearing uh, the fruit uh, that, that remains and that the Lord wants uh, for us to produce. You know, and it says that he comes and he, he inspects the fruit. Uh, and there is a, um, uh, in the second book of, of the Song of Solomon, it talks about the little foxes will come, little foxes will come to spoil the vine. And those are, those are words, that's attitudes. Those are uh, fleshly things that we might um, do uh, that, that actually um, hurt one another or bring injury to one another. And so uh, those little foxes know what, what they're doing. And so we're to guard against that uh, by having no regrets. And so I just want you to, uh, I leave that with you between you and the Holy Spirit uh, as Brother Fred brings the message uh, about producing uh, that fruit. Okay. I'm going to talk about gifts, uh, spiritual gifts. And of course, there are uh, nine gifts of the Spirit. And there are also nine uh, fruit of the spirit and, and you know that's not just a coincidence they're they're tied and intertwined together the fruit and uh, the gifts and so we need mm -hmm. to understand that uh, the gifts only work uh, from the fruit from the fruit uh, and so fruit is something uh, you grow in and, and you grow and produce fruit and but the gifts are a it's a gift to you. It's from the Holy Spirit. You just receive it. Uh, so there's a whole lot of difference between receiving a gift and then begin to operate in it versus growing uh, the fruit. Now, the fruit, that's where the seed of life is. Mm -hmm. And so if we, if we think about the uh, fruit, uh, such as love and joy and peace and, and others, uh, they have a, they have within them a seed of life Ooh, and you. and so it's important for us to produce that fruit and so that other people can experience our love and they can experience our joy and they can experience mm -hmm. our peace and that's where they get life uh, see there's no life uh in uh men's doctrines there's uh, life in the fruit of the spirit that you are producing and sharing with other people, letting them taste your fruit. Now, sometimes we might think, well, I don't want them to taste my fruit. I, I, I want to just to uh, continue to hold it all here. But the reason we produce fruit yes. is so that others can partake of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's important for us to produce uh, the fruit of the spirit. And that's a growth process, but the gifts are something that the Holy Spirit gives to each of us. And uh, what I want you to realize that they work together. And it's not just by coincidence that there are nine gifts and nine spiritual fruit, fruit, but they in fact uh, work together. Um, let's see, I, I wanted to go over a couple of verses, but I guess I left them uh, in the other room. But you know, no, the uh, it talks about if we uh, in in First Corinthians thirteen, the first two verses, uh, it says if if we speak in tongues and, and and we don't have love, then it's just a gong, uh, just an, a noise, noisy gong and a sounding brass. brass. And, and so th there is a connection then right there in 1 Corinthians 3, verses 1 and 2. And he said, you may have, in verse 2, he said, you may have uh, faith uh, to, to remove mountains, and, and you may have all knowledge, and you may have uh, all of these things. And those are all gifts. Uh, 
but if you don't have the fruit of love, then um, then you're nothing. Mm. Well, that's mm. that's pretty uh, surprising. I, I mean, we think, well, if I, I, I operate in the gifts uh, such as knowledge and tongues and, and prophecy and, prophecy and uh, the gift of faith, if I operate in these, then uh, surely I'm somebody. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have the fruit, then you're really nothing. And so it's that combination that's very important that the gifts flow out of the uh, out of the fruit. It said uh, Jesus said himself uh, that pr prophets and these are the people that uh, they prophesy, and if they uh, don't have the fruit, then their prophecy that's not something that's worth listening to. So he's saying, look at their fruit. That's the way you'll know a true prophet. If they're producing love and joy and peace and, and the fruit of the spirit. So it's not about uh, how great their gifts are. Yeah. It's about are they producing fruit. fruit? And that's really important. And and that's the main point I want to make tonight. And uh, that we, we've got to realize we need to be producing fruit. Okay, so let's just think about gifts for a moment. There's something that you receive uh, from the Holy Spirit. Of course, it comes from the Father, but it, it passes through uh, the Holy Spirit because he's the God on the earth. He's the God. The Holy Spirit is the God on the earth. And we want uh, those gifts, whatever uh, he gives us, we want to be able to uh, mature and operate in those gifts. And uh, let's just take uh, prophecy, for example. If, if we look at... Uh, First uh, Corinthians chapter 14, verse 5, it says, all can speak in tongues and all can prophesy. And, and so we're told to desire the best gifts. And so everybody can prophesy. Okay, so what do we do? What does Sherry and I do uh, with people uh, that come to us? A lot of times they're drawn to us because of the gifts. Uh, because they see the operation of the gifts. And there's a lot of people that uh, have a lot of knowledge about the gifts, but uh, we try to operate in the gifts. And what it says in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 14, verses 24 and 25, it said, if you prophesy to someone, it will reveal the secrets of their heart and they will fall down and say of a truth, God is in you. And that's what we want to do. We want to make a difference in the lives of people. And it's going to take some gifts. It's not all about the fruit. And so many people emphasize the fruit and that's what they focus on and, and think, well, I'm doing a lot of good things and I'm showing my love and all. But the thing that's going to impact them is prophecy. It's going to reveal their hearts and then they will just fall down on their face and say of a truth god is in you so prophecy is very important so the gifts are very important and uh, we don't want to minimize uh that in talking about it. we would need to realize that the gifts are very important now i want to say to all of you that you might not have an interest in the gifts right now but you know it says um desire the gifts, yeah, the desire gifts. the best gifts. Uh, and so that is that just uh, something for a suggestion? No, and when God says something as clear as that, I believe he means what he says, and that is something we ought to do, is to desire uh, the gifts. And so what Sherry and I do is help people develop in the gifts. And then uh, different people may have uh, emphasis in one gift versus a, a different gift. And so what we try to do is help them walk in their gifting. And so uh, particularly you think about the Sunday night uh, programs that we have on kingdom mm -hmm. leadership training. There's a lot of people prophesying. Well, a lot of those people never prophesied and, until they got around us and, and found out uh, that uh, they could prophesy. We encourage people, but you might not be at that point right now. And that's okay but you can't go through life 
and not do what God tells you to do and be obedient to what he's saying because he's saying, desire the best gifts and uh, you may all prophesy. So all of you may prophesy, but you may not be at that point right now. So we're not forcing anything on anybody. We're just making it known that uh, how the gifts operate. And uh, Second uh, Chronicles 20, 20 says, believe the Lord and you'll be established and believe his prophets and you will prosper and be uh, have success. Okay, and so you could say, well, I don't believe in the prophets. Well, you just mark out that promise of having success and prospering mm -hmm. because that's a promise. If you believe the prophets, if you, and so then you begin to desire uh, the prophetic word, uh, then you begin to prosper and, and uh, have success in this life. This is not about, oh, when I get over there yeah, the sweet uh, to, bye -bye. Uh, to heaven, uh, I, I'll believe in prophecy, but we need to believe in it now. See, we've been around a lot of people, around a lot of mature prophets, and they've helped us a lot. They've prophesied to us, and, mm -hmm. and they've trained us to help uh, to, to prophesy to other people. And so we've prophesied to uh, multitudes of, of people, and uh, it, it's been... Uh, enlightening for those people that we prophesy to and uh it, it frees them up to do what god calls them to do so um pro and, and of course they're all the gifts and so on but i'm focusing more on prophecy tonight uh and just because a prophet is going to prophesy that doesn't mean that everybody who prophesies is a prophet but it says everyone can prophesy. Right. And so don't think, well, it's beyond me. Our people told me oh, we don't do that anymore. What we do in this, uh, in our relationships is to try to uh, expose them to the things of God and the things of the Holy Spirit so that they begin to operate it. And there's uh, one lady that's in our Sunday night, I won't mention names, but uh, when she came to us, she'd never heard of a word of prophecy, but the particular night she came uh, to one of our meetings, uh, some prophets prophesied to her and revealed her heart, and she never left, and that was uh, 25 <laughs> years ago, and she had never been around prophecy, and but they knew things in her heart that were only by the Holy Spirit, only the Holy Spirit uh, knew, and what were, she was prophesied to freed her up and she began to desire uh, the gift of prophecy. And so she's matured a lot over the years. And now uh, she's been ministering for years uh, in the jails. And she can go through every person in her service. And it might be 15 people or it might be 30 people. Mm -hmm. She can prophesy to every one of them. Why? Because she's been trained in prophecy. And, and, and what she has said is that that impacts people's lives. It frees them up. Yeah. It lets them know that God knows about them, that, that he's not a God far off, but he's a God here looking uh, at the hearts of people. And, and so when uh, prophecy comes forth, uh, then it begins to reveal the secrets in the hearts of people and begins to release potential in them and what they can do with their life. God has something mm -hmm. mighty in store for each of you. And the gift of prophecy is just one of the gifts that God uses to help equip you and let you know where you're headed and what lies ahead for you. And so we, we strongly uh, uh, believe in the prophetic uh, gifting and, and we've operated in that for years and trained many people uh, to operate in uh, the prophecy and the gift of prophecy. I have but, a, I okay, have, Sherry's going to say something. I have a, a personal example, and that is when we worked on the streets a lot with the uh, what I call the um, uh, the punkers, the um, teenagers and young adults. They had piercings all over their body. They had uh, even some of them were had been branded. Uh, with different things. They had uh, tattoos all over their bodies. And, and we would go down there and we would 
not only feed them, but we would uh, pray with them. We would sit and talk with them. And there was a young, young man. And my point being is that prophecy uh, many times can lead to bringing someone to the Lord. And this, this young man was sitting by himself and I went over and I sat down beside him and I began to uh, share some, some things with him from, from my childhood. And, and then he began to um, uh, tell me about how his, his father, even though his father was a deacon in the church, uh, would come home and, and beat, uh, beat him and beat his brother and, and finally, they both ran away from home. And, and so I began to, to share about the stripes upon the back of Jesus and how Jesus was whipped and how he was beaten. And it was all because of his love for that young man. And by the time everything was finished and I began to uh, prophesy to him, and share some things that the Lord was telling me about his, his childhood, even more than the beatings. And he began to cry. And, and he was not just, um, it was just not tears coming down his face, but he was, he was weeping and sobbing. And right there on the, on the streets of Athens, Georgia, he accepted the Lord. And, and so uh, the prophetic gift um, can lead to, to many things. It can give direction. It can uh, speak to the hard issues, but also it can bring salvation uh, to individuals. And, and on that day, it certainly did. So. Well, uh, Sherry is a prophet, if you haven't guessed it, but she is a prophet. And uh, she prophesies to people and uh, if we're in a restaurant, if God wants her to minister to somebody at another table, people that we've never seen before, uh, she'll go over and give them a word of prophecy. She will impact their life and they'll turn right then and, and begin to uh, cry and their hearts will become tender and they will e accept what the Lord is wanting to do in their life. So we've seen that over and over, yeah, over again. And over again. Uh, so prophecy is very important and it's not just to be used in uh, a religious setting. Uh, that's fine if uh, a pastor wants to do that, wants to use prophecy, but it's not limited. It, you know, God is yeah, not limited. Yeah, it's it not limited. Happen any place, and God wants to touch people, and He wants to use you uh, to touch people. And so you can know things by the Spirit, and, and as you begin to to uh, prophesy that, then it will impact their life. It'll open it up and reveal the secrets in their heart, and, and they will want to, to change. Uh, let me tell you just a, a, a religious um, uh, routine, go through a religious routine and think you're going to win hearts and, and change people. It's not nearly as effective no. as being led by the Spirit of God, okay? So it's important then to operate uh, by the Spirit of God, be sensitive to what the Spirit is saying. I, I believe that uh, uh, there will be a time uh, that God wants to use you yes. uh, wherever you are, that there are going to be people you come in contact with, and, and sometimes they're not your family. I, I, it'd be wonderful if we could all win our, our family, but, but there are some other families that maybe nobody in that family is able to win them, but God can use you. Uh, but you have to remember that we that we need to uh, operate and produce fruit. Uh, otherwise, our gifts yeah. are, are nothing. They don't change uh, the lives of people. It's when it comes out of the fruit uh, of the spirit. That's when it becomes effective. Right. Uh, a, a lot of times, uh, people uh, want to want to pursue the the gifts and not be concerned about the fruit. But you know, Jesus said in in John uh, fifteen five, I believe that uh, uh, apart that He's the vine and we are the branches. And apart from Him, 
we can do nothing. nothing. And so if we're going to produce fruit, uh, it's the Holy, it's the Father that produces fruit in our heart. That's where he produces love and joy and peace. And we know that uh, this joy comes out of being in his presence. Yes, in yes. The presence of the Lord. So uh, like Psalm 1611 says, if, if you spend some time with the Lord, then you're, you're going to have some joy. Yeah. Uh, in his know. presence, see, there's going to be a fullness, fullness of joy. Fullness of joy. And, and it only occurs there in his presence. So it's not like, uh, we can choose, pick and choose where we want to get it. Oh, we want to get it in our service, in, a, in our, our religious service, or we want to get it over here and at our house. Or You've got to be in the presence of the Lord if you're going to receive joy, and that's one of the, of the fruit. Uh, and if you're going to have peace, you know, Jesus said, I'm, I'm going to go away, but, uh, and I, I've overcome some things, but I'm giving you peace. Mm -hmm. uh, so he has peace for each of us, and that his peace will overcome the trouble that we, that we experience. So we do need uh, the peace and the joy. Yes. Uh, now, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God is very important. You know, it, it, it doesn't say to seek uh, doctrine first. It doesn't say seek the church first. It says, or even the gifts. Are, are the gifts. It says seek first the kingdom, kingdom of, of God. God. And all of these things will be added to you. And what does he mean by the things? Well, the gifts can be those. Uh, you, and the you, fruit. Can, you can uh, receive the, uh, the gifts and you can receive the fruit. And the fruit has to grow. And it takes a time uh, to produce love and joy and peace. Now, the kingdom of God in Romans 14, 17 says the kingdom of God is not about eating and drinking but it's righteousness, it's peace, peace, and joy, joy in the Holy Spirit. So the kingdom of God is all about the Holy Spirit, and, and we need uh, to produce that fruit, righteousness, peace, and joy. Now, there is a verse that became alive to me years ago, and that was uh, Matthew 21, verse 43. It said, if you're not producing the fruit of the kingdom, then the kingdom's going to be taken, taken away, away from, from you. Now, that's a pretty hard uh, a statement, mm -hmm. but I didn't make it. That's what Jesus said. If you're not producing the fruit of the spirit, the fruit of the kingdom, then you're going to lose. It's going to slip right through your hands. The kingdom, see, is the realm of the supernatural. It's the realm of the Holy Spirit, and it uh, is something that is within you. The, the kingdom of God is within you, and it, the fruit that you produce with the kingdom is righteousness, peace, peace and, and joy. joy. And if you're not producing righteousness, peace, and joy, then you don't get to operate in the kingdom. And it's the kingdom where everything's added to you in the kingdom. Woo, glory. So that's the realm where the Holy Spirit operates. That's the realm of the impossible, uh, where the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit is. For miracles are. And that's where miracles are. And, and miracles as a gift. Too. Mm, the mm. gift of miracles, the gift of healing. Those are all of those occur in the kingdom and in the realm of the Holy Spirit. But if we're not producing fruit, we lose the possibility of fulfilling miracles and healing mm. because that's all available in the kingdom, in the realm of the Holy Spirit, in the realm of the supernatural. So I want all of you uh, to think about what what are the gifts that the Holy Spirit is quickening to you, uh, even in this time. What what is the Holy Spirit quickening to you? When the Holy Spirit comes in, uh, he he can bring all nine of the gifts. Yes, he does. It's not like oh, I mean because he's a gift giver. He, mm -hmm. He's the one who gives you the gift, and you can have all of them. And there's no limit. And there's no limit on how much fruit you can produce. If you want more love, you can produce more love. You want to double the amount of love you have, you can produce uh, twice as much love. Mm -hmm. Whatever you want, there is no limit in God. A and you know that your mind is renewed uh, when the impossible uh, seems logical. Mm, Let me say that again. Ooh, that's good. The realm of the Holy Spirit. 
Your mind is renewed when the impossible seems logical. It can happen all the time. It can happen every day. The impossible mm, hallelujah. can happen every day. Then you've really renewed your mind. If you're still thinking, oh, I can't do that, uh, and the, and God can't do that, uh, then... And how uh, is that going to happen? And then you're still in the carnal realm. And the carnal realm is somebody that's born again, but they haven't renewed their mind to the word of God by the spirit of God. And oh, that, let me say this. Okay. And in the carnal realm is where we have regrets. It's in the carnal fleshly realm that we might say something or do something that will cause us to have a regret. Well, that's very good. And, and I can certainly relate to that myself because when we were first married, I, I did a lot of things I had regret about, particularly the way I treated uh, Sherry at that time. And because I did have a carnal mind, uh, it was what the world had uh, taught me. It's what religion uh, had, religion taught, had me. taught me and what uh, my friends had taught me. And, I and hate all, religion! And all of that. Uh, then, uh, but we have to renew our mind. And that's where it becomes real important. You can renew your mind to the word of God and by the Holy Spirit. And then the impossible things will seem possible. Mm -hmm. uh, no longer do you do put that over in that category and say, well, that's impossible. I can't do that. Because if mm -hmm. you're walking with the Lord, you've renewed your mind. There is nothing impossible. Isn't that what God says? Yes, I mean. Nothing is impossible with God. Nothing is impossible with Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. But you've Hallelujah. got to renew your mind so that you understand that. Uh, and then you can operate in that impossible realm of the supernatural uh, and where the Holy Spirit is. Because that's what the kingdom of God is about. It's the realm of the Holy Spirit. And that's where we have, where we produce righteousness, peace, peace and, and joy. joy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and then we can see the impossible happen. Uh, Sherry and I have seen many, many miracles. And, mm -hmm. and uh, it, 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 we never. Uh, Arms grow out. We've never Hallelujah. lost uh, our. A sense of awe because whatever God is doing it's a sense of awe with it and uh, but but there's nothing impossible all things are possible with God and not only that but Mark says all things are possible to him who believes yes I mean so you've got to get amen. to the point where you believe all things so be producing fruit and be operating with the gifts and the gift is just something you receive and you begin to walk in it and operate in it as the Holy Spirit wills. And so it's it's by the Holy Spirit. So you've got to have a strong relationship with the Holy Spirit. You've got to follow the Holy Spirit and know what is in his heart and what he wants to do through your life. And when you go into Walmart, well, ask the Holy Spirit, what, what does he have in store for you there? There our restaurant, our, our restaurant, where our church you are, service. There are going to be people that need a touch from God. And you may be the only person carrying enough anointing within you to set the captives free. Hallelujah. Well, Hallelujah. That's for all of us. Uh, and it's not just to wait till um, that uh, my pastor calls on me to, to prophesy. We can do it every day. Oh, the people we come in contact with. Be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Find out what the Holy Spirit wants to do in your life uh, each day. Ask him. Give him freedom to operate the way he wants to operate in your life, and you will see miracles. You'll see the hearts of the people revealed to them as you operate in the gifts. So we know that we cannot produce any fruit without a relationship with Jesus Christ. He said, I am the vine, you are, are the, the branches. branches. Without me, you can do nothing. So we have to have that relationship with Jesus Christ, and then we will produce fruit. And the good thing about this fruit, it's fruit that's going to remain. It's eternal fruit. So you you uh, lead somebody to the Lord, or where they've never known the Lord before, and, and you and joy begin. led someone to the Lord this yep. week. Yes, praise God. Amen. Well, that that is an eternal fruit. You've you've produced an eternal fruit when you've changed the life uh, that was going mm -hmm. away from God, and you've changed it 
by the Holy Spirit operating through you to lead them to the Lord. So these things I'm talking to you about tonight are very important. And you need to be producing the fruit. You've got to be connected with Jesus in order to produce that fruit. And then desire the gifts and be sensitive to what the Holy Spirit says. Now, So you don't need to go for 15 years and think the Holy Spirit never speaks to you. Because you know Jesus is the Word of God and the Word is always speaking. And so he wants to speak to you today. He wants to speak to you every day. He just, he, he is not at a loss for words Amen. because he is the word. He and, loves to talk. And he loves to talk to you. You have to be sensitive to him and led by the spirit of God. And then you will impact the lives of people. God has special things for each of you. And, and uh, you open yourself up and yield yourself to what the Lord wants to do in your life and through your life. Um, that to to contact people and you might say well um i i just don't have any opportunities to uh to lead people to the lord uh, we were talking to a, a friend the other day and his granddaughter is still in high school and and she's leading people to the lord all the time that's right all the time she's she's still in high school and you might say well uh that's that's her no that's the gifts yeah. that operate within her. That's that she's producing the fruit. And the same thing is possible for all of us. We can uh, produce the fruit because that's where the life, the life, the seed has life in it. And that's the seed of the word. The word has life and it will bring life to people. And then we can change their hearts uh, through the operation of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit wants to use you to touch people and to lead them into the kingdom. Okay, Sherry?